Welcome. Here we are at Grace Healing. I'm Larry Reynolds. Welcome. I'm Ina Hale. Um, I, I want to begin in the commitment we've made to each and every one of you that we would open first in prayer and see where God wished to lead us and um, to form protection over the nature of words that you're about to be exposed to, that you would rest upon and receive only the words that God intends, not necessarily what we might press forward. So I just open our hearts right now as we breathe deep yarve amakura bosne kutravanor otoro koi bere khare otura ma shebri andar khan manaya special bi andar koi en mena vibri anokotor divis bieli andar korebe abun sole kal mi yashte kabrion tuturi kabliyanana avra khane mi ilieter koi asma God, away we stand in awe, thanksgiving, praise, and worship to know that your spirit is here to guide us and make known your glory, your presence, your love, your wisdom. We submit ourselves completely before you now for the sake of all people that draw to these videos, that they would be stirred in the remembrance of your presence, blessed in the holy and divine grace that is afforded within you, as we surrender ourselves now under the holy protection that is afforded by Yeshua, and the life-giving breath of your presence within. And even as we surrender our tongue, both Ina and I, that the very nature of your spirit would govern our words to bring forth the highest blessing, the highest increase of vibration within all people, to rise and ascend to remembrance and recognition of you and all that we do. Yes, total agreement. Amen. 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 And I want to begin by deepening the story we were sharing in the previous video that we did yesterday um, about Andy. And I want to take you back to the experience of actually being in the jail and yeah. meeting with him in the room because um, as I've mentioned a number of times in these videos I've had to reconcile a lot within myself to figure out what exactly was God showing me um, and as revelations became known God was presenting me opportunities to see how they really worked mm -hmm. and this was one of those perfect examples where here this guy was dying he, he you know he had 45 days worth of meds in his body it was obvious by the jaundice and and the like the green pallor to his skin mm. that, that i mean the the liver was the yellow so that was the liver shutting down uh the green was the bile from within the gallbladder the the intestines and all surfacing in the skin and your skin is basically a a sign of what's really going on within the organs and stuff and Quite frankly, he was dying. Um, and at that point, if you remember from the previous video, he had started this episode of taking these medications Sunday morning and then couldn't remember and went into an anxiety attack and kept taking more and more medications. And from that, it culminated in him being arrested for a public drunk because the medications had made his system so erratic that he staggered into the front yard then staggered into the street mm. as a police officer was driving by <laughs> so if you want to look at this from a divine perspective this was orchestrated in such a way that it would provide an opportunity to learn and experience and for Andy to learn but also for me you know yeah. God blessed me in the opportunity for instruction you know absolutely and learning curve exactly continual yeah it's just ongoing so here he was he was arrested for being a public drunk but he wasn't drunk yeah so they Amazing. get him in the tank that's sunday evening 
uh, at late, I mean, I guess it was around dinner time that he actually got arrested. So now it's the medication's been in his system all day long hmm. through this experience of being thrown into the jail. Then while he's sleeping at night, not sleeping, and they kept hearing him mumbling from within the cell about meds and, and this about meds. And they kept saying he kept repeating meds, and then he'd mumble and trail off. And meds and meds, and they, in a normal case with a public drunk, they're sound asleep, they're crashed out, or they're belligerent, yeah. or mm. or they tend to improve. You know, they're getting further away from the influence of the alcohol, and they improve through the night. Yeah, usually. They were watching this guy, Andy, get worse. So mm. again, they had found in his belongings my business card for Grace Healing. And so they called it, and I went and I got the things and got back to the police station, and, and, and again, we discovered that it was definitively an overdose issue, not a drunken issue. So they bring him to that room, as I described to you, and we begin to pray. And I want to bring you to what Andy was experiencing, not just what I was witnessing, um, in what he described to me later on. Um, as I'm sitting on the other side of the glass wall, as I told you, I had to keep trying to get his attention and smack the glass and then make it follow down until his eyes were looking at me. And he's just, he's in the chair, like reeling all around like this, rolling and eyes rolling in his head and he was just completely totally out of it um, as I described once again I want to remind you that his eyes were so bloodshot and yellow from the jaundice and the blood rising into his eyes that all you saw was a black dot and the red and yellow in his eyes there was mm. no white yeah. that I could see in his times when his eyes would open up and then he he just squint back down to me, it was, I was like this spectator in watching this thing unfold. And mm -hmm. it, it was pretty intense. Yeah. Because I had a deep love for Andy even in that moment. And I'm watching this guy, and I'm sitting on the other side of a glass wall. Remember, it's not Larry in the room. It's God present yeah. within Andy. And I'm sitting there. I want to help my friend, God's son, my Absolutely. brother. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do? So I had to kind of submit to God is going to have to do something here. I'm just going to pray. Yeah. So as I get Andy's attention, he takes the phone and he's like on the phone. I said, Andy, we need to pray. And he's, yep. And he was having a real hard time forming words. It was very difficult. And I'm getting specific like this so it helps you understand the progressive realization of what unfolds. So he's having a very diff difficult time even forming the word yep. Hmm. Um, but as we begin... I surrendered into prayer and I had this awareness rise within me to teach him like a child, teach him the name that is Yahweh, that he would return and know truth within him. So I started saying, now speak with me, say Yah, as I'm talking through the phone, he's Yah, Yahweh, Yahweh, I release to you all that I am. I release to you all that I am. And he was repeating as we go. So at this point, I sense rising within Andy the spiritual ground of hostility. Mm. And my sense was this, this was me, what God was bringing up in me. Andy had embraced hostility within the jail. Because, I mean, he was thinking that hostility would protect him from the police or protect him from the other inmates or whatever. Now, wait a minute. Talk about the logic or insanity behind this. He can't even lift his head up off. He can't support himself. Yeah. What is hostility going to do to protect you? Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's how the spiritual veil can make us think we're embracing something that's the protector spirit of hostility when it isn't. Yeah. yeah. So he's able to come to the point now where he couldn't even say yup. Now he's saying Yahweh, I release to you all that I am. And I said, what do you feel in you right now? And he goes, hostile. So it was in line. There was confirmation, testing the spirits. Yes. In that moment, hostile. And I said, well, Andy, say it with me. Say Yahweh, I release to you the spirit of hostility. I release to you the spirit of hostility. And he speaks it. 
all of a sudden he's on the phone now he's sitting up more up upright he's sitting on the phone and I see in me the spirit of confusion rising in him hmm. So I'm releasing from within me the spirit of confusion because what I saw was something leave him. And it was that spirit of hostility. It was a separate form, a separate entity. And it was restored in the light. So even though he was confused, I sensed confusion and I prayed release from within me of confusion. And in that moment I said, okay, Andy, what do you feel? And now he felt the change from hostile to this uh, you could actually see his body going what was this and he says confused mm -hmm. i said say with me yahweh i released you the spirit of confusion and he released the spirit of confusion and he started to brighten up and honestly i don't remember when the transition point was it wasn't at this point but he was still all like red and jaundiced and mm -hmm. his skin pallor was still off and everything but at this point i was led in an instructional way to ask God to bless my tongue to speak first person for Andy. Yes. So it was all of a sudden, I just went into this and many spirits started to present. Spirits of abuse, spirits of aggression, spirits of depression, spirits of anxiety, all these different things. And like there may have been, I remember in the beginning, there was many spirits of anger. We went through probably 12 or 17 different spirits of anger. Yeah. One of the spirits of anger was named at the age of 17. I didn't get into the issues. I didn't study the spirits. Yeah, you just I kept seeking God. Mm -hmm. So... I didn't allow for what was going on in a spiritual nature. And this, again, wasn't Larry. God was gracing me with this awareness. It's not something that Larry said, oh, I'm not going to allow for this. It wasn't a sense of me doing this. I was blessed to participate as God was functioning in this role. And I was the blessed observer. I was the spectator in the God sport, if you want to call it that. But we kept going through, we got through many spirits of anger many spirits of anxiety and it just kept going we were we were passing through this litany of spirits and coming into the abuses and then i was seeing the spirit of abuse as manifested through the experiences of his youth mm. and then his his uncles and and different situations where he had been physically abused and harmed and wronged uh -huh. so we get through it and now we're going along and to be transparent honestly i don't know when the transition happened but 167 spirits into this <laughs> wow i'm beginning to realize he's speaking now to me very clearly sharing back and forth through the phone talking openly and i'm like going oh my god he's he's not green he's not yellow Amazing. his eyes are perfectly clear like mine now and the blue of his eyes was visible and I was just in awe. And I'm sitting there kind of like, honestly, I mean, again, to be transparent, I was kind of in a place of disbelief. I'm sitting sure. there like going, wait, what's, what's going on here? I need to understand this more. So I had to kind of pray to subdue myself because I was, honestly, I was excited. I was like, looking to find more answers here but mm -hmm. I had to stop to find the answers because I still needed to deal with Andy and that's what I said in the previous video I asked Andy well what do you feel and he's sitting there on the phone and he just looks up at me and he says hopeful yeah. but he did it now not oh, you know he wasn't down he wasn't you know all broken physically yeah. wow. he was bright and said hopeful and I just looked at him I said well great well when you go back to your cell <laughs> sit there in the presence of God and God has revealed himself within you through hopefulness that aligns with the nature of God hope Absolutely. charity yeah. compassion awareness truth love and remember he's got to go back to a jail cell mm. to perform this so I mean we're sitting here in the confines of a living room you're probably in your bedroom or your living room or wherever you happen to be or sitting in your car in a rest area watching this video and here he is he's got to go back to a jail, a jail cell and complete this prayer and so 
He stands up, walks over, and knocks on the door. Now remember, I'm still behind this glass wall. He's on the other side. And he stands up, and as he's walking away, I'm realizing, oh my God, he's walking perfectly fine. <sighs> it's not like when he came into the room where he bounced off the wall, bounced off the door, bounced off the other wall, and fell into the chair. And I'm watching this unfold as he's walking away, thinking, wow, this... Because again, this came after the stream of consciousness writing in Covenant of Love, and I didn't fully understand it. Yeah. And now I'm being shown something that was so real, so tangible, that I couldn't just look at this as this esoteric teaching, this thing that might potentially work for somebody. It was actually happening right in front of me. So he knocks on the door, and the door opens, and again, the sheriffs are standing there, the two gentlemen and one woman sheriff standing there, and they're expecting to catch this guy falling out of the door. Because again, they let him go, boom, 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 he falls down, mm. they're watching on the camera, but they didn't really register what was changing. He comes to the door, he's perfectly fine, they're standing there, and he's like, hey, and he walks between them. <laughs> oh my gosh. And they're like, what? And they're like looking at each other, and then they look back into the room at me, through the glass wall, and again, as I stated on the previous video, they're like, well, what what happened? And I said, I don't know. I just did this thing. You know, I mean, I'm looking through the glass, trying to communicate to them yeah. on the other side of the yeah. room, just going, sure. I, don't, I don't know. I just, <laughs> you know, we did this, and he's fine. Go do what you're going to do. Yeah. So I turn around and walk out, and I'm overcome with what God is showing here. Honestly, in tears, I, I get out get to the car in the parking lot and I just broke down in tears and I was like God I need greater understanding I need greater discernment I, I, I seek you I understand mm -hmm. you with me you have revealed this before me I need your understanding more deeply and in that that became a progressive realization over the next two weeks of God deepening in me clarity of what was the covenant in love the order of the heavens and how the spiritual realm functions within them and manifests within us that we are actually the holy instruments that Yahweh God and Creator Abwum Yeshua placed upon this earth to see that spiritual realm restored we can either choose to embrace the gift of waking to that reality or continue to sleep while it happens through us. Because the reality is, God is restoring the spiritual realm. And that's when, like when Yeshua said, and you may be better on this than I with the scriptural reference to it, that when he said that all things are of a spiritual nature, yet you don't even understand the earth. And I am teaching you things of a spiritual nature, and you still don't understand the things of the earth. When he was speaking to the disciples. And I kept being drawn back to that awareness throughout that following weeks. This is not something of the earth. This is something of a spiritual nature. And as you saw these things leaving, the spirits, as I saw different spirits rising out of um, Andy and returning into the nature of God's love, I was not compelled through the old paradigm. The old paradigm is to bind and cast these things. Yes. To cast these things off into the place of the dry bones or whatever. And I've heard the, uh, many other things. But even when I was growing, those things cut across my heart. There was something wrong with it. Yeah. It, it, it didn't fit what I believe to be our perfect loving God. And in my limited understanding, the most powerful being in all creation. So why does he have to imprison something he can just transform? Was Absolutely. my mindset, if, that, if you follow yeah. that. Yeah. And I hope you're following along with this, because this is how simple it really is. Yahweh is the most powerful force within all creation, is the force within creation. Yeshua is the image of that most powerful force. Abun is the living breath of that most powerful force that resides in you. So if we remember this and recognize this, that's what we're dealing with is the living breath of God within us and every single thing of corruption manifested upon this earth as Yeshua taught us is all spiritual in nature. Seek not the things of the earth, rest in the fullness of understanding and release those things of a spiritual nature. 
And that's what was going on with Andy. So 167 spirits down the line here, he's not even showing physical manifestation of all the toxins in his body. And for you people that have a medical background or nurses or anybody that's listening to this video, you know what it's like if somebody puts 45 days worth of seven different meds in their body. Hmm. It does not do any good. And again, in that anxiety attack, he was doing that over the course of a few hours into Sunday afternoon, and then it stayed in his system until that following morning when I showed up at the jail. Hmm. That's a lot of time for destruction for those chemicals to come against the organs. So all this being said, the reality was to me that, again, we are dealing with things of a spiritual nature. Every time we see something unfold in such a way that we are dealing with something of a disease within the body. Even in my youth, when I used to study martial arts, I would see somebody get hit and then they'd have a headache, a headache in them. And I would walk over and just place my hand. Are you okay? And place my hand and I'd see something leave. Yeah. <laughs> and I just assumed everybody was seeing the same thing I was. Yeah. Uh, and, and later in my teenage years I started to realize that everybody looked at me kind of weird and withdrew because I could see those things and then when I touched them something left and then their headache was gone amazing so now I know in my heart that everybody had the ability to do with it but nobody was looking for it because they were waiting for that group at the church that was going to help them mm -hmm. or that priest on the altar that was going to help them or that Monsignor that was coming from the Vatican that was going to help them they had lost sight of the fact that it resided in them. Exactly. So that's, yeah. that's the basic premise of what I wanted to share about the story with Andy. And I won't go into it too deeply, but there were many, many other miracles that surrounded how God blessed him to free him from the spiritual ground that he had been walking through blindness. He didn't know it was spiritual. He thought he was supposed to surrender to a council role instead of seek God first as he went into counseling. Embrace that which came of God from the counselor and set aside that which did not come of God. He, he wasn't equipped to know these things. So as he tried to return, gain access to his son, it came with a ransom. If he wanted to gain access to his son, he had to take these medications. Mm -hmm. They would not allow him access to his son without taking the medications. So his love for his son was used as an instrument to thrust him to the point of near death. Yes, and that's where he went with it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, so what's what's on your heart now from that? Well, it, it's really interesting, again, um, finding God within. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to be in fear if you've got issues going on in your life to know that you can speak and come right into Yeshua being in his presence and releasing of those things is so much easier than the binding and casting out yeah. that I experienced. Um, well, wouldn't you say when you witnessed them, they almost, they felt they were battling the spiritual? Oh, yeah. I mean, I can even test be a testimony and witness to the very things that uh, being involved in certain settings of of uh, Christian organizations, mm -hmm. of healing rooms and uh, altar ministry, just beautiful. But I have not seen the things that I have through Grace Healing mm -hmm. walking in love. Yes. And I'll just tell you, I'll just make it very simple for you. <laughs> it's not about trying to figure it out, it's just receiving. Yes. <laughs> and the downpour of that love just rises up within you. And to receive His presence, His love, his mercy, his grace, and healings, and grace, and all that he is, is already there to just receive it, you'll find that yourself coming into a greater alignment of health and restoration, whatever it might be. So this is one story of many. Oh, yeah. I, I, that's, that's why in these beginning <clears throat> stages of, of Grace Healing Channel here, I, we're transparent. And yep. Larry speaking and sharing, he's got so much in him and and uh and as she says this is really only one small example of thousands yeah so it's i'm trying to do this in a way that i convey these understandings to you without overloading 
with getting into 37 different stories that support the same view or 150 different stories that support the same view. I'm trying to give you basic areas as a pointer for you mm -hmm. to say, what if this is truth? Now seek God. Go to God, not Larry. Even in the spiritual process, if you're sitting there and you encounter the spirit of confusion, don't seek confusion for the answer. Seek God for the release. Release the spirit of confusion. Not in battle. I'm not a prayer warrior. I'm a minister in love. I surrender into God's presence. As God's presence, the things of a spiritual nature cannot hold their form. They become blessed as God intends them to be, not how we may have held them prisoner through confusion, anger, fear, whatever implement we used to function on our ground here. So it is about you seeking God, and you hear me say that enough, but that's the reality. Seek God first. You encounter something of a spiritual nature, release it. Seek God first. Don't study the spiritual nature. Many council models out there teach you, oh, we need to seek this. We need to look more deeply at this issue. We need to study this. We need to figure out where is this anger coming from. No, we don't. We need to first seek God, release the spirit of anger, then seek God for the wisdom. Not the origins of the anger, but God. God will bless you to know the place you need to seek to forgive others. God will bless you to know the freedom of anger. He will bless you with wisdom and clarity because that's the source of all manner of blessing. Yes. All the other counseled approach is let's study the demonic. Let's study the spiritual to gain answers. We in Grace Healing just don't agree with that. We believe that you must first release the spiritual into the fullness of God's love, then embrace God's presence, which provides pure wisdom, not veiled by the desire of something of anger that wishes to reside within you, not hold prisoner by that of unforgiveness, which is to reside within you. God first, God manifested, wisdom is birthed and comes forth. So if you enjoy any of our time on these videos, please like and subscribe. And as you look below, you'll also see that there will be an opportunity for you to comment and we will do our best to respond to those comments. I know myself or Ina and we'll have other people with us, whether it be Don or Deb or Pamela or anybody that could reach to you and respond in these ways that would help you understand with greater clarity how this applies to your life. Yes. And I do want to say how much Yahweh loves you. He loves you so much that it's not, again, an accident that you've come to this channel to yeah. Grace Healing. And I, I, I guess I'll sound like a broken record. It's good. <laughs> but what it is is just being in His presence and just receiving His love. And it goes from there. You, got, you don't have to figure anything out. Yeah. If you, even, even those that are right now that are mute and they can't even hear, but they see our lips moving. Yep. And He loves you right where you are. And there are many that are going through things right now. And no matter what it is, stop and just receive His love and recognize the breath that you breathe, that you are alive. Yes. And it proves God's presence within you. For life cannot sustain without the presence of God near. Yes. Therefore, if you are alive, reality is God is near. So set aside the religiosity, set aside religious instruction or catechetic reasoning Just or doctrinal thesis or whatever. Set it aside and remember that if you are manifesting life, the truth is that life cannot manifest without God's presence near. Hey, what do you have to lose? Exactly. <laughs> Give it a try. I mean, uh, what, what do you have to lose than to get God's presence and, exactly. and knowing more of His love? And just real quick before we leave, I'm, there's something coming up about those that have been in prison that are reaching out in this right yes. now. You're not in prison. Right. Some are better to behind bars to God just, you know, come in a way that couldn't when they were outside of those bars. And for whatever reason that you're in, in an institution, he's speaking to you right now. Yes. Coming into that greater love. There's things going on even there, but he's reaching through even now. And just to receive that love and not hold any of those right now. There are some going through unforgiveness for themselves. Exactly. And he loves you so much to say to release that not to carry it because right now you're carrying that 
And he and remember that's the spirit yes. of unforgiveness, separate manifested form, holding presence within you. Yeshua said, "All things of a spiritual nature, not just the earthly." Just because you feel unforgiveness, the reality is it proves that the spirit of unforgiveness is present within you. Receive God's perfect forgiveness by releasing that and welcoming God within that place in the fullness of his love and forgiveness. And just real quick, you wonder, well, why? That's his grace. Yes. It's just because he loves you. Don't question it. It's just not receive to be it. earned. It's to be received and recognized. There's nothing you have to do but just to awesome. receive. Great. We love you. And we will close now in a prayer. So if you can just open your heart into God's presence. Yarvi an trokoi anama fure bele kamur kotoi esmire tu tu kori amantaraba sharhele mi antur kuni ni kafran mur kluur arbas mi atu tu kuni mana abun lebe kabre un tu tu kobi ana kitiara besna tu tu kori kamlio shemeketu yama. As we complete this time and this prayer in the most blessed and holy name throughout creation, Yarvi lachim. Yeshua Hamisia Kabun Soliben Turian Manaka. Amen. Amen. We love you and look forward to connecting with you on the next video. We love you. Bye bye. God bless. Yeah.